exam questions looking at the topic of break even this presentation is going to take you through some past exam questions all around the topic of break even so firstly you may want to make sure that you either take a print screen of this for example or you download the resources so you've got a copy of them you can print them off or you could even use it on a pen a paper and obviously on your own area just write it down for example but you can see the question here where you've got a table to fill in and then you need to place those lines on the graph. So pause the video while you do that and then unpause it and we'll look at the answers. So firstly, you need to work out your sales revenue. Now you did that by doing the number of waffles multiplied by the selling price. Remember, we know already revenue is money going into the business. So zero times £2.20 is going to be nothing. 500 times £2.20 is 1,100 and 1,000 times £2.20 is 2,200. So there is our money going into the business. Now remember we know that costs is money going out and we know that variable costs are costs that change. Remember change with output, so variable costs. So the variable cost is 50p, but if we sell no waffles, nothing times 50p is nothing. 500 times 50p is going to be £250. And 1,000 times 50p is 500. And now we've got our fixed cost again, money going out because it's a cost. Remember, fixed costs don't change. So we know that there's £800. So if we sell no waffles, we still have £800 in costs. If we sell 500 waffles, we still have £800 in costs. If we have sell 1,000 waffles, we still have £800 in costs. Now remember, you need to learn the formula for total costs. So remember, total costs. So it's going to be fixed costs plus variable costs. So 800 plus 0 is 800. 800 plus 250 is 1,500. And 800 plus 500 is 1,300. And now at this point, we need to plot it on the graph. So at this point here, what we need to do is actually follow our points along. So let me put my pointer on the screen to show you. So let's do our fixed cost line. So we need to do number of waffles are down here, for example, and our revenue goes up this side here. So we have got zero waffles, 500 waffles and 1,000. So zero there, 500 down here, 1,000 along here. And we want to do our fixed cost, now 800. So at zero here, go all the way up to 800, put an X. Go at 500, go all the way up here to 800, and we put an X. And 1,000 up there, and we put an X. And then I join those Xs together, and what I end up with is a straight line. And I'd label that as my fixed cost line. Important that I would label it. I do the same then for my next line. So look at this one here, my variable cost line, the same thing, 0 and 0. Obviously down here, 500 and 250. So I'll go along to 500 and 250, and obviously along there, 500. And I'd label it up. Then I'll do the same again with my total cost line. And notice where total cost line starts from. Total costs always start from your fixed cost line. That's where they start from. There's a rule of thumb. And now we can then add our revenue line in. And what you'll notice is, and it's the rule of break even. Remember, break even is a point where you make no profit and no loss. And remember, revenue is money coming in, total costs is the money going out. And at that point there, you're breaking even. So that is your break even point because it's right there. And you'd read down here and it'd come to 470 roughly. That would be your break even point. Now, in this triangle there, everything after there is the area profit. That is the area profit, all the profit you're making in the business. Just like everything in that section there before your break even point is your area of loss. Now, at this point here, I wouldn't get all the marks because I've not labelled it up. I'd have to put an FC next to my blue line, put a TC next to my total cost line, an R next to my revenue, and I'd obviously put a VC next to my variable cost line, and also write area profit, area of loss, so, and I'd put the arrow. There's two other questions points. here. You can see, you can see that's B how it would see. work. Pause the video whilst you have a go at these, and then unpause whilst we look at the answers. So here, the question is asking you, basically, if they increase the price of the waffle by 5p, so £2.20, what's going to be the impact? Well, if you increase your revenue, you don't need to sell as many waffles to break even because you're going to have more money coming in because actually you're making more on each waffle. So think about this logically. If you increase your revenue, your break-even point actually decreases. If you increase your costs, so you're going to need to sell more items, so your break-even point goes higher. So you have to sell more items to break-even. So there's two marks here awarded. One is for the fact that saying what happens to the break-even point, 
and one is the same Y. So let's think about this next one down here. Outline one impact, right? Now this is because, remember, Millie's giving away basically a free waffle. So that's basically a cost to the business. So what's going to be the impact? Well, it's going to make the break even inaccurate. Because think about this logically. It doesn't factor in the fact that she's giving a waffle away. So actually a break even point is going to be higher than what she said it is because she's giving away a free waffle. So it's going to cost their business even more money. That is the answer you're looking for. Again, what's happening and why? Okay, so pause the video again while you have a go at this question here, and then unpause whilst we look at the answers. So firstly, let's hope you've got these right. You would have got your total cost line because you spotted it starting from your fixed cost line, and you will have calculated your revenue line because it started at the bottom and it intersected your total cost line. And it said on here, down here, calculate the break-even point. Well, the break-even point is where the two lines intercept, which would be 40 customers. Now, at this point here, we've got a new term being thrown in, margin of safety. In other words, it's asking you, how far ahead of the break-even point is she? So we know her break-even point is 40, and we know that she's currently got 55 customers. So you do 55 customers minus the break-even point of 40. She is 15 customers ahead of her margin of safety. In simple terms, she's into their profit by 15 customers. And it says here, and then the next question down here is, explain two limitations. Explain. So I need the point, and I need Y, and I need it twice. So for example, only a prediction. There's your first point, right? It's a prediction. And then you explain why. It doesn't take into account external factors, such as the cost of raw materials changing, or it doesn't take into external factors, such as a competitor opening. Remember, these are all answers that are valid or acceptable. Then my second point, it's an average figure. It assumes a business only sells one product. So actually, if it sells more than one product, you'll have to do it more than once, right? You can have things like it's time consuming. It takes time to plan out. So these are all valid answers that you're allowed to use. Remember, there's no set answer at this point because any valid answer is accepted. Hopefully you've done well with that question. Let's look at the next one. So pause the video now whilst you have a go at this question and then unpause it whilst we have a look at the answers. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is complete part D. You can see it's slightly laid out differently, mainly because I couldn't fit it on the screen otherwise. So you've got a table. You have to draw and label the fixed cost line, the total cost line, the revenue lines, and then mark on the break-even point. So firstly, you have to then do that same thing we looked at before. Let's put on our fixed cost line. Well, we know fixed costs are 4,000, so we get to 4,000, 0, 4,000, 100, 4,000. You get the idea, put the X's on. Draw my straight line and label it. Notice I've not labelled it, so I wouldn't be getting the marks. Right, then I can put my total cost line on. Remember, we know the total cost line always starts from the fixed cost line. So again, I've plotted it on. So I've gone 4,000 there, and I went up to, obviously, 5,000 for 100 with my X, and I draw my line all the way through. And now, lastly, I can put my revenue line on, and we know that when our total costs and our revenue intercept, that's the point where we break even. Remember, break even where you make no profit and no loss. So I can read down here, and that would give me the break even point telling me 200 units. And when I know the 200, I can start to use that to do the next part of this question. So, margin of safety. So, we know that at this point here, Jasmina sells 375, or she's got 375 different customers, and her break even point is 200. So, 375 minus 200, she's got a margin of safety of 175 customers. So why is it important to know the margin of safety? Well, at this point, it's a state question, so it just shows you how far above your break-even point you are into your area of profit. Simple as that. You know, it shows you how many customers you could lose before she starts to break even. Any answer like that is perfectly valid and acceptable, right? So not a problem if you come up with answers like that. Hopefully you've done well with that question. Okay, we've got two more questions to go. So look at this question here. Slightly different. You've got a formula. So the first part is you've got to put the numbers into the formula. Second part is you've got X, Y, and Z where you need to label it up. Pause the video while you have a go at that, and then unpause it to see the answers. So the first thing to do is with any of these questions is put your numbers into the formula. So you can see here that I've pulled my fixed cost down to 2520, and I've divided it by 850 minus 220. That bit's in brackets, remember? So because it's in brackets, you do it first. So that gives you 660. And then you do 2520 divided by 660. It gives you four weddings. That's the break-even point. Nice and simple. The next part is simply area of loss. Because remember, it's that area before the break-even point. 
The Y bit is the area of profit because it's a bit after the break-even point. And they've asked you about the straight line. And the straight line is always the fixed cost. Well done. I'm guessing most people picked up all the marks for that question. Last but not least, similar sort of question, but you've got a calculation question and then two word-based answers that you require. Notice the word explain, so it means a point and tell me why. Right, really important you do that, but it says point and tell me why. Right, pause the video while you do that, and then unpause it to see the answers. So the first thing you would have done is pulled your £60 in fixed cost. Notice the decimal, they try to catch you out possibly there, but it's £60 in decimal, right? 18.50 minus 3.50, which would be £15. 60 divided by 15 is four jobs. So there you go, four is the answer. Perfectly fine, you're rolling now. Right, now you've got a bit more spiel here, right? Look at this here, monthly cost has gone up, by the way, right? So, this, so basically explain one way this increase in monthly fuel costs is going to affect the business. Explain one way. So what is the way, what's happened, and why? Right, firstly, you tell me it's going to increase the break-even point because it's a cost that's gone up, right? So you say it's basically you're telling me the cost has gone up, break-even has gone up, and because the cost has increased. That's what I'm looking for. That's as simple as that. Nothing more complex than that required. Right, look at the bottom here. Explain why it's important for an entrepreneur to use break-even. Right, these answers are obviously open to interpretation. But something like saying it helps with planning for the business because it helps to inform your break even point would be a mark. You could say something like it's useful to work out how costs and change their price. That would be a mark. Technically speaking, there, you didn't need all that information there. It's just going through and giving you suggested answers. Remember what I said in the mark scheme, it always says any valid answer. But it's important to remember in an explain question, you take state of knowledge and then you tell me why. Hopefully, you're feeling more confident about break-even. If you have got questions and you're still not sure about break-even, check out the other videos I've got on break-even where I explain the concept because hopefully you would then understand the concept and go back to these questions and be able to answer them. I'm hoping that you're feeling really confident about break-even. It's an area of the exam where you feel like you'll be able to pick up all the marks. It is one of my favourite topics in business. So don't forget to give a like, subscribe and follow. And remember, keep buzzing.